couch dogs need the lesson Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to lesson number nine in Finally Understanding Chords, the 10 Lesson Chord Theory Masterclass course right here on Lickin' Riff. It's been quite a ride so far. We've been dissecting the guitar neck for every type of chord imaginable from the basic chords to the jazz chords. And now we're finally gonna go crazy and start finding creative chord shapes. Uh, chords that are made up on the spot that may or may have not been seen before. But before we do, I strongly suggest that if you haven't watched the entire series, please do. Otherwise, uh, at some point, you probably won't understand anything I'm talking about, especially not this table, okay, the embellishment table. If this looks like gibberish, go to the introduction video and watch the uh, introduction video. I explain what this is all about. So, um, we've been discussing everything that have to do with chords from the minor and major chords to diminished chords to embellished chords like uh, 11, uh, sus4, sus2, 9, add 9, 7, minor 7, major 7, um, and uh, the caged method as well. So now all that's left is to find interesting chords. So, um, the... The test here is to see what you come up with. The idea is that uh, if you combine different shapes, you come up with really nice ideas. For example, uh, the, basic, uh, the basic idea for um, combining shapes that I can give you is this. This is a G chord uh, because we combine the G shape and the D shape. Okay, I always use this chord in my arrangements, okay, because this is kind of like a piano chord. It's more spread out than most guitar chords, and uh, it has the bass note of the, the basic G chord, and also the open strings from that G chord, but it has the high B note from the D shape here, or the C shape here, so this is actually a combinated chord, a modular chord, um, and you can find them anywhere. For example, what is this? You've heard this in dozens of heavy metal songs or ballads, okay? or you may have written a song using this chord yourself. But what is this chord? This is basically just A minor add 9, and it's A minor because it's A minor we just choose two of the notes within the A minor. We choose the eight and the um, the minor third. And this note is already in A minor. So already we're combining shapes. And the open B string is the ninth chord as we've discussed in the third lesson. So this is a convoluted a minor add nine chord, combining two different shapes. Okay, here, if you open the B string, you have no third, so this is a sus2 chord, but here, you have the third, okay, the minor third, so you get this interesting sound, and you can actually get interesting sounds everywhere. Um, for example, if you bar anywhere and open the strings, just take the bar off, you're likely to get an interesting sound. And by now you should be able to explain what those sounds are. So for example, if we take G and we open the bar, okay, we left the barring finger off, then we get not a very interesting sound, but this is G6 because we have Okay, and then we have the same note as before because four on the third string is the open second string, but we have the open E string. So we might see this as an interesting uh, option for uh, playing a unison. Okay, this is, this is an interesting sound. Um, some songs use it. Okay, and this is the sixth. Now if we take this down to F sharp, it's a whole different story. And this is full of embellishments. Um, 
um, this, okay, let's see what this is. This is the, uh, the one, right? This is the eight. So eight, major seven, minor seven. So it's um, F sharp major with the minor seven. And we also have five, flat five, four. And we've already discussed the four is the 11. So we have, we have at 11, and uh, it's, it's minor seven at 11, but it's a major chord. So it's F sharp minor seven at 11, but you have to add the big M there because it's F sharp major minor seven at 11. So voila, we just lifted the bar off of the strings and instantly we have an insanely named chord. And you have it everywhere. You can have it here. Okay? And it all depends on what you choose to do with it because if I just play this, might have sounded a bit weird, but just picked a picking pattern, just a random picking pattern, and the open strings gave uh, gave me the melody. So um, actually, I won't try to explain it because uh, again, what I'll choose to do is to show you that this can be many many chords. Remember, a chord's name uh, can be many different things, as many as the notes in the chord. So this might be something outside of B flat minor. This might be something outside of of uh, uh, an F sharp chord. Okay, this is inside F sharp here. So um, and then we have the same thing as we did here. Okay, so. Funny that I chose the same exact chord. All right, moving on. So um, um, let's just take the bar off and see what we get. F, we get this. This is a really cool chord. You can do a lot with this chord. And uh, again, this is, okay, if this is eight, this is my uh, the major seven. So this, has a major seven in it and five flat five. This is a seven flat five chord, F seven flat five. But let's just have fun, okay? Let's stop dissecting the chords, okay? We have this ugly chord in G sharp, but in A, we have again the add nine, okay? Instead of here. Instead of here, we can just raise the bar, lift the bar, raise the barring finger. I mean, in B flat, it's uh, gonna be strange, but you can do really interesting things with this. Okay, it just depends on uh, finding the right sequence of the notes, but it's an interesting chord. This on B. Um, actually kind of a normal B chord because this is B and this is E and in B okay E would be the 11 so this is a B at 11 chord if you don't trust me B C D E it's the fourth note And you can do the same thing with chords over here, but keep the first two strings open. Ah. What an evil chord. It just looks evil. It's actually pretty nice when you get to know it. string and see what happens. For example, if we take the A shape and we open the third string, magic might happen. <laughs> not here. Maybe here. Again, not here. This is a duplicity. Okay, but getting close. 
This is interesting. This is a sixth chord. But here it sounds good. Wow, this sounds awesome. This is a really cool chord. Let's add the open E string. Again, very, very interesting. get out of the, the new harmonies that you find. And um, of course you can find stuff like this as well. You can toy around with different fingerings and see what you get. Let's try this. Ah, too far. You know, this is uh, an add nine chord. Let's see why. No, oh, of course. It's something that I showed you in the previous lesson. You can play stuff out of the chord without actually playing the full chord, which is this. Okay, this is uh, G sharp add nine. G sharp minor add nine, I must say. This is G sharp minor, eight, flat nine, nine. So just taking this three out of it. These three out of it. So see, you can play uh, notes out of the chord. And you can also take shapes that you know how to play and just toy around with those, try to stretch them. So we have a seventh chord, C7 shaped, just up here on uh, seven, eight, and nine. So this is F sharp seven. Again, we're on F sharp, but okay. The universe wants me to play F sharp as examples today. So let's just take this, try to stretch it. Take this finger back see what you get. You like it? No? Take more fingers back. This starts to get interesting. Let's see what about the E string. This is interesting, but we have a duplicity. This is E. So um, let's keep going backwards. But we have a duplicity here now. So let's take this uh, up. Okay? Now the E string gives it a strange kind of feel, so let's keep it this. Now let's take this one fret down. Now this is a duplicity, but because we're uh, fingering both frets, this gives it a really interesting quality. Now let's try to see what, we, what will happen if I take this down a fret. A really interesting inverted fifth chord. Um, inverted fifth chord because this is a power chord, this is a five chord, and um, if we just um, play it like this, then uh, we get the fifth and the bass instead of um, the root and then the fifth. So now um, let's close the circle and um, start playing around with the basic chords again and see what we can get now that we know how to toy around with chords. Okay, for example this. This is a really interesting chord without going anywhere on the neck, without leaving home. Um, so this is an A sus2 chord and I added the 6. So you can call it A sus2 add 6 or A sus2 add 13. This is a really nice chord. Let's see if we can uh, add something to it. The sus4. In my opinion, the sus2 sounded better, but this is a really interesting chord. Um, and um, let's take, for example, we we toyed around with C enough, so let's take uh, D. Okay. Chose to uh, move the five around, five, flat five, and then four, which is 11, so it's uh, at 11 now, and then flat five again, then five, then we can take the 5 and raise it to sharp 5 and make this an augmented chord and then we can change this into an augmented minor chord 
But here's the catch. Remember what I told you about uh, when you go too far, you get a whole new chord. This is what just happened. This is now B flat over D because this is B flat over D. So this is B flat slash D now. Um, we can find a different name for this as well, but let's not. Um, we toyed around with uh, theory enough. So um, I'll leave the rest to you. And in the next lesson, I'll show you how to tie everything together and uh, go on your merry way. So thank you very much for watching this lesson and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.